Hello, my name is Timothy Prokopchuk, and today I'll be doing an introduction to solid state lasers using our neodymium YAG laser here at the Nebraska Center for Materials and Nanoscience as an example. So the first question I want to answer is how do lasers work? So laser stands for light amplification by stimulated emissions of radiation. And the first part of any laser is optical pumping or elevating electrons here by sending energy waves from an energy source, which in our case is the flash lamp here, and elevating these electrons to different levels here, but most importantly, higher levels. And eventually, through spontaneous emission, these electrons will fall to this metastable level right here. And it will fall there because this metastable level right here has a higher lifespan. So through probability, since this has a higher lifespan, eventually everything will fall here. Now it may fall lower, but since our flash ramp is always supplying energy, it will go right back up and we'll reach this important level right here, which is called population inversion. And this is when there are more electrons here on this higher level than below it. As you can see, there's five down here, eight on the N3 level, which is metastable. Now we go on to part two, which is stimulated emission. So this starts out with the Q switch releasing light. The Q switch doesn't produce light. It just controls when we let it through because there's a mirror on this other side. So the light from the previous slide, right? There's spontaneous emission, which releases some light, but not a lot, not enough for a laser beam. And that light might bounce around since we have mirrors on both sides. And when we let this Q switch through, or open, which you'll see how we do it later on in the video. This Q switch lets the light through and it comes to here. And it's very important that it's this 1064 nanometer wave. So we get this wavelength from uh, the uh, drop from metastable to N2 or metastable to a ground state. And we get this specific wavelength for NDEAG and this is needed because it's the only, you need this specific wavelength to have this uh, agitation of the electrons to make them go down. So now this wavelength will hit these electrons and get absorbed and cause them to jump down an energy level. But since they're jumping down an energy level, they have to release their energy and this becomes the light for the laser beam. So now I'll show you our solid state laser here at the lab, which is an ND YAG laser. So this is an overview, which is kind of hard to understand without knowing the parts or seeing it in person. So I'll go in depth on more parts. Right here, this is the main laser compartment. This is where the uh, optical pumping and population inversion happens. And this is where the ND YAG actually is and where the laser gets produced. So here's a cross face section of this compartment. As you can see in ours, we have two flash lamps and then we have an ND YAG and then we have this hole in the middle for the actual laser to get through. So ours has 0.9 to 1.4 neodymium and the yttrium aluminum garnet, which is about the amount that we get the most effect out of. Then it, this part is also water cooled because it will get hot, of course, as we have a lot of energy going through here. And importantly, it produces 1064 nanometer lasers. So as I specified that the wavelength of 1064 is what we need to agitate the added electrons to go and stimulate emission. Uh, that's because it also produces that wavelength right there. So that's the stimulated emission part. Now, this is the Q switch. So as previously stated, this is very important for stimulated emission. And basically it's what holds the light back until we want the stimulated emission to actually happen every 235 microseconds. 
So we found that 235 microsecond pulses um, give the most energy because it first allows the atoms to reach population inversion since that needs a little bit of time, but it also doesn't let them spontaneously emiss down below that metastable level. So this is how it works. When it's on and it lets light through, the pocket cell here has voltage running through it. And what happens is light comes out of this main compartment. It goes through this polarizer, gets polarized, turns horizontal, goes through this quarter wave plate, gets a 45 degree rotation, turns circular. Then it goes through this pocket cell, turns linear again, and gets turned vertical since there's another 45 degree rotation, bounces off this highly reflective mirror, goes back through this pocket cell, gets another 45 degree rotation and turns circular, and then goes back through this quarter wave plate and gets another 45 degree rotation and turns linear. So as you can see, there's 45 degrees, 45 degrees, 45 degrees, and 45 degrees. So 180 degrees of rotation, just turns it back into horizontal light and that passes through the polarizer. But when it's off, it only gets 45 degrees, bounces off the mirror and another 45 degrees. So it gets rejected actually at this polarizer because it's vertical. So that's how the Q switch works here. Now we go on to the double or quadruple and reflector. So the reflector is actually in a different box than all the other parts I've previously talked about in the double and quadrupler. So the double and quadrupler are these two squares you see on the right of the main box we've been talking about. And they're there to shorten the wavelength to make it more absorbable by our target. So basically the laser energy will be used better. And that's the goal kind of, or that's the goal. Kind of. Now we go on to the double or quadruple and reflector. And these are actually split up since the reflector is in a different box than all the previous parts we've been talking about and the double and quadruple. So the double and quadruple are here to shorten the wavelength to hopefully 266. And we want that because it's more easily absorbable by our target. So more energy will be used from the actual laser, which is what we want. So the light will come through, they'll go through the stubble and quadrupore, hopefully turn into 266, but there will be some residual of different wavelengths since some of it might only go through the double or some of it might only go through the quadruple and some of it might not even hit any of them. So this light will come through and it will hit this mirror, but this mirror does not reflect 1064. So it then go into this beam dump and then it will go into this mirror, which will actually do the same thing. And if it's 1064, it'll go into this beam dump and hopefully we'll end up with 266 or a little bit of 532 or 355 going out this way into whatever we want to use the laser for. Um, thank you for watching. This was a simple video on solid state lasers and I appreciate you spending your time.